Hello and welcome back. In this video, I will discuss the bias of a kernel density estimate. So let's see what we get there. So we want to consider the bias of the estimate f hat first. And I already said this at the end of the previous video, what we are going to do for now is we will consider x as being fixed and we will compare f hat hx to f of x. Later we can think of how do we compare the functions, but for now it's just this. Good, then we know the bias of an estimator, f hat hx here, is the expected value the estimator takes under the model minus the truth. And the only thing we need to be careful about here is even under the model where we have random data, this x is not random. It's the samples capital X1 up to capital Xn, which are random, which will show up in a second. So that x here stays a lowercase x. Let's do what I just said. Let's consider the model. So here we get expectation of f at h is 1 over n, some i from 1 to n k h x minus x i. And here is now the random sample from the model which replaces the data. So here I have to write capital X i and that's the random quantity which we take the expectation over. And from this expectation we still subtract f of x. Now to show the bias is small, that's our aim, we need to consider this expectation and our aim is to show it's close to f of x. So let's see what we can do with this expectation of f hat h x is expectation of 1 over n, some i from 1 to n, k h x minus x i. And the first thing we can do is we take the sum out of the expectation. So we get 1 over n, sum i from 1 to n, expectation of k h x minus x i. And now the next step is to remember that the x i are iid random variables. So as far as the expectation is concerned, these are all interchangeable. So each of these expectations equals expectation of kh x minus x1, say. I could have picked any, just picking x1 because it's the first, but the point is this does not really depend on i, they are all the same, and I can just write any of them here, and this will not matter. So let's do x1, just to make clear they are all the same, and then we get 1 over n times n times the expectation for x1, and then the 1 over n times n cancel, and we get the result, expectation of kh applied to x minus random x1. Good, so what can we do with this? Now we need to evaluate this expectation. And since kh is a nearly arbitrary function, there seems to be no good rule for that. And as a general principle, if you have to work out an expectation and there are no general rules you can use, you can always write it as an integral and try to work with the integral. So let's do that. So the general rule, if x has density phi and h goes from r to r, then expectation of h of x is integral possible value, so h of little x, and then density phi of x dx. So that's the general rule. It's taking an average of h of x values and phi is the weighting, and to take the average here because it's continuous, we integrate. So that's the general rule, and here we know x1 is one of the random variables from the model, so that has density f. So what we can write here is integral, now the function which I called h in the generic formula is called kh here, or rather kh of x minus the argument. Then we need to be a bit careful, there is an x in our problem, so we cannot use x for the integration variable here, so I use y instead. And then we need to write the density, which we know is f, so we get integral kh of x minus y, f of y, dy. Good. I want to use that kh is symmetric, though that's also integral kh of y minus x, f of y, dy. That doesn't change the value, but it makes the next step a bit easier. Now what I want to do is I want to use substitution. So the substitution rule for integrals, I write z equals y minus x. 
and then I get integral kh of z and y is in z plus x so I get f of z plus x then the derivative of the transformation dz equals dy so here's just a one dz and the last thing which I need to be careful with in theory is the boundary so I haven't written these minus infinity up to plus infinity and we see if y goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, the shift by x does not change anything. z also goes from minus infinity to plus infinity, so the boundaries stay unchanged. Good, so that's what we have here. Now, before we go on, we need to understand a bit more about the function kh, and I'll do that in the next subsection. Okay, so this is the formula for the bias. And in the next video, we will discuss the kernel kh a bit more so that we can make sense of this expression. So let's see what we get there.